So I want to bring Jesus today within the confinement of time for a few minutes and introduce the Savior once again in this audience. If there is one person who has not accepted Jesus as a Savior, may this be a moment for you to have a time of reckoning, a time to process, a time to reflect, and a time to commit. May this be the moment that God in heaven had ordained for your life for eternal consequences. And may I be a servant who is truly, truly faithful in what has been delivered into my spirit. So let's get to this message this afternoon and let's receive it with prayer. I want to title this word, this message with these words. It's an Hebrew word. And the word is Sava Yeshua. Sava Yeshua. How many of you know, even though we use the name Jesus for the Savior, that was not what he was called. That's what the English people called him. But that was not his name. He was born in a Hebrew context. And the name that was given to him was Hebrew. The name was Yeshua. Jesus was not his name. It is Yeshua. There are organizations that are a bit dogmatic about it. To the extent they want to bring back the usage of Yeshua, even in the Western churches. There are, there are groups dedicated only to that, to, to bring back to the original name of God, of, of Jesus. I know we use the word Jesus, and I believe God understands it, but some people are dogmatic about it. You know, there were two versions of his name known to the ancient churches or the first century church. One was Yeshua. The, one, the other one was Ehoshua. Ehoshua. So there are two variants to this name, Yeshua and Ehoshua. It simply means God saves. Yeshua means salvation. But if you were to look at history through the ages, when you come to second, third century, the name Yeshua, even in the first century, I went to some manuscripts today. Even in the first century, the name Yeshua were used in a short form. And that was Eshu. And for once, I'm proud of my heritage, for many reasons. But for once, I'm proud in a spiritual sense, because in our language, we use the word Eshu. Can I see some people who use the word Eshu? <laughs> we use the word Eshu. And that's exactly what the name was. Eshu. So it is Yeshua, Yehoshua, Eshu. What does that mean? It said it means God saves. The first person, and by the way, it's a common name in the time of Jesus. There are, you know, we have objects that we have discovered through archaeology um, where we have found names of, or, or names called Jesus or Yeshua from the first century. So it is a common name. But the man who carried this name ahead of time, who became a typology of Jesus Christ himself, who brought the people into the promised land, was a man by the name Joshua, whose name in Hebrew is Yeshua. So his name was Yeshua. But by the way, it's only in the book of Nehemiah we see the word Yeshua, but before that it was Yehoshua. God saves. That was the name of Joshua. So I've, and I trust you understood this. It's Yeshua, and even today Jewish people say Yeshua, Yehoshua, and Eshu. Now let me come to this. The word Sava means command. Command. From where we get the word Sava, which is now the word for Israel army. Israel army is known as Sava. From where we get the word Saba, from where we derive the name Jehovah Saboth, the God of angel 
armies. Jehovah Sabbath. So the word that I brought today is command, Yeshua. And where do you find those two words? It's found in Psalm 44, verse number 4. Psalm 44, 4. Let's read that. You are my king. O oh God, ordain salvation for Jacob. And the word ordain can be read from King James. You are my king, O oh God. Command deliverance for Jacob. The word command, it's sava. Deliverance, and ESV says salvation, is the word Yeshua. So we find the word Yeshua in the Old Testament about 78 times. Yeshua. And that's the name that Jesus carried. So when you hear the, see the word Yeshua, it means salvation, it means deliverance, and other translations have used the word victory. So the name Yeshua is not just a simple name. It is a name that embodies power, embodies deliverance, embodies salvation. You know, when somebody says Yeshua, it means God can save you, or God is your salvation. When somebody says, you know, Yeshua, that means God is your victory. When somebody says Yeshua, it means God is your deliverer. Can I hear the sound of people who can call Jesus Yeshua today? He is your savior. He is your deliverer. He is your victory. Come on, somebody shout a hallelujah. That's my Jesus. So when the angel was saying to Mary in, in Matthew 2.21, by the way, many of you have heard this. Some of you might have studied as well. The book of Matthew was originally written in Hebrew as opposed to Greek. At least that's what the church fathers believed. And today I was able to get some manuscripts, original manuscripts. Uh, I think it is Harvey 3716, I believe you know, manuscript where you can see what the angel spoke to Mary in the original script. And there it says, his name shall be called Yeshua. With the youth, with um, uh, Vav, and you have got the Ayin at the end. So you have got Yeshua. That's what the angel said. What was the angel saying? His name shall be called Salvation. His name shall be called victory. His name shall be called deliverance. His name shall be called who will rescue you. His name shall be called rescuer. Today I want some of you to know what his name means. If you believe he is your salvation, he is your deliverer, he is your rescuer, he is your victor, he is the one who gives you deliverance. Can you make a sound of joy in the house of the Lord? He is Jesus. Now, very interesting when the psalmist talks about Yeshua. Look the way he projects the deliverance, the pattern, rather the process of it. You find that in Psalm 44. Next to us, 44, 5 and 6. Look how it is given in terms of the means of it. Through thee, when Jesus, Yeshua is your salvation. I want everybody to listen to this. When Yeshua is your salvation, we will push down our enemies. Let me tell you, when you have Jesus as your salvation, the enemy is not going to push you anymore. You are going to push down your enemies. Can I hear somebody? Yeah. Church, I don't, I, 
I don't want to sound mystical. There's no need for it. I don't want to even become outlandish in my, in my you know, interpretation of the word. But for simplicity reason, let me say this. Today there's going to be a baptism where some people are going to be going into the water. But let me tell you, today when you go into the water, you have a, a conscious knowledge that very soon you will come out of the water with a life that is new, with resurrection power guiding you and the Holy Spirit to be your companion from now on. But at the same time, there's a truth that you should never forget. When you are going down the water, it is your salvation. It is your salvation. And because Yeshua is now glorified in you, salvation is now manifesting in you. Every enemy that came against your life is going under and under and and under, can I, come on, son. Come on, church. If you believe in Jesus, he is your salvation. Sorcery will have to go down. Witchcraft will have to go down. Powers of darkness will have to go down. And let me tell you, every demon that is attacking you will have to go down. Because Yeshua is your salvation. Can somebody say yes in the house of the Lord? You have victory in Jesus. And I have a word for you today. If anybody has been confronted and been experiencing any form of addiction in your life, believe today you don't have to live in addiction anymore. I come from a background where we saw a church of just over 100 people suddenly move and grow into thousands and later Tens of thousands. We saw thousands upon thousands getting baptized. And many of them were new people from the streets. Many of them didn't even know who Jesus was. Some of them, or most of them were from Hindu background. But I want you to know some of them were drunkards that the family had problem with. Some of them had addictions that nobody could help. Nobody could help. But let me tell you, our church did not start a de-addiction program. What our church gave was the power of the gospel. Can I get a shout of hallelujah? Come on, can I hear the name? Yeshua, Yeshua, he is your salvation. He is your deliverer. He is your victory. You know, my brother, he used to be a chain smoker. My mother used to cry. You know, when he used to come home, sometimes late in the night, sometimes we don't even know when he's arriving. But let me tell you, when he comes into the house walking, and the moment we see him walk, we know he is completely drunk or he's under the influence of some addiction, some drugs that have gone into his system. But let me tell you, the day he got saved. This is not just one story. There's a story of multiple, multiple thousands of them. Let me tell you the cigarette addiction addiction was broken. The drug addiction was broken. Every addiction was broken. And today, he's a prophet of the living God. Can I hear a shout of hallelujah? Let me tell you, Jesus still saves. That's the gospel. Let me tell you, let me say if I were a what do you call this? People go from house to house marketing. What do you call them? Door to door salesman. And if I were to be selling this particular glass, and I say this glass is a special kind of glass, this glass is miraculous. This glass came from Italy. <laughs> Come on, we have some people from Italy today. It just so happened. <laughs> Amen. And finally, I tell them this won't break even if I have to drop it. Let's say one day I just happened to drop it by accident and it broke. That will be the last time I'll venture into that particular location because I don't have, I need to save my face. I brought a product and I found to matter dismay, it was not worth my marketing. But let me tell you for the last 35 years, I've been selling a product. 
and I can keep on selling the product. In Africa, in India, wherever I go, I can talk about that product because that product has never failed even once. And the name of the product is Yeshua. Jesus saves. Even in Canada, I can proclaim there is no other name but the name of Jesus that can save you. His name is Yeshua. If you believe that, can you put your hands together? Give a Lord a praise in the house. Jesus, Jesus saves. His name shall be called Yeshua. And the enemy will be thrust. Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to preach on that. Let's go back. Through thy name, I love it. The psalmist, when he said Yeshua, prophetically he said, that's the name. That's the name. We tread them under that rise up against us. God was giving ahead of time the name Yeshua. And that will be the name. The first time the name Yeshua is used in the Bible was by Jacob. When did he use that? Jacob, when he was blessing his children, he was now old. In fact, his eyesight was failing him. He didn't even know who the young and the old was. He couldn't differentiate. It was so bad. But not one word that he said was wrong. Because surpassing the weakness of his eyesight was the supremacy of a supernatural eyesight that took control. He was able not just to see what was happening at that point of time, but he was able to prophesy into hundreds of years later with regards to his children, including the appearance of the Messiah himself. And all of a sudden, he is now prophesying of his son, Dan, now, Dan is a mystery. There are many people who have written books about it. And I don't want to go into that because that's not my focus today. Why Dan is missing among the tribes that the book of Revelation talks about? Why is his name missing in that particular list? There are many things about Dan that seems to be a mystery. So many people believed, including some church fathers, that Dan will be the tribe from which the Antichrist would come. People held on to the view that the Antichrist must be Jewish. Dan will be the tribe. But what made this mystery even more, you know, kind of very, very interesting are these words of the Father in Genesis 49, 17. The Father gives a prophetic word for Dan which seemingly doesn't fit into something that is normal. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path. He bites the horse, heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. The word snake and heel are the first words connected to the coming of the Messiah. The seed of the woman shall crush the serpent's head, and the serpent's seed shall crush his heel. This was a prophetic word. This was the first messianic prophecy. But look, the moment Jacob talks about the snake and the heel. He stops prophesying. And he interjects a word, a statement that is not prophecy, but an exclamation. That has no bearing on his children. But an exclamation nevertheless. And this is what he says the next word. The moment he says serpent and heels. I have waited for thy Yeshua. That's exactly what he said in the Hebrew. I was waiting for Yeshua. Oh Lord. The moment the serpent and heel came, 
He declared, he exclaimed. The words blotted out of his mouth with a prophetic unction. And he said, I'm waiting for Yeshua. Let me tell you from the first human being on this planet to the last one, there is no other hope but Yeshua. But the great progenitor of the tribes of Israel, the man who wrestled with God himself, is saying, I am, I have still not seen him. I'm waiting for Yeshua. But today we are in a much privileged place. We are not waiting for Yeshua anymore. He came. He lived. He died. And he rose from the dead. And now living inside of us. Let me tell you, if anybody has received Yeshua into your life, can you make a sound of joy in the house of the Lord? I am waiting for Yeshua. Now let me give you a few verses as I wrap it up here. Very soon. I want you to do justice to linguistics. Okay? Because that's how Hebrew people, you know, when Moses was taken out of the water, it was so simple. His name is called Moses, taken out of water. Come on. So when somebody puts a name Moses here, I would definitely want to know what water were you taken out of. Because there should be a meaning. But now it's come to a point we don't care about, you know, what it means. It simply put some names. And, you know, in our, even in our culture, names that don't, sh you know, sh 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 and all kinds of names. And even, it doesn't matter. Names should have meaning. Biju, Binu. You know, that's also some of our names. But when the Old Testament people gave names, it meant something. So you might ask, what's the meaning of the word Anison? <laughs> Anna comes from grace. And son is son. Come on. <laughs> I think my father didn't know that. <laughs> okay, okay that, that's, that's another debate. What I'm trying to say, we want to put name. I was very careful when I put the name, you know, Nathan. I knew exactly what I was putting as a name. But I want you to know this. The Jewish people were very careful about name. Now look at the name Yeshua. And Jesus walking. Okay, here I'm just showing, going to give you a, a kind of an illustration. The first time, the man called Simeon takes Jesus in his hand and said, Lord, I have seen your salvation. What was he saying in Hebrew? I have seen Yeshua. Salvation is Yeshua. Yeshua is not an idea. Yeshua is a person. See, that's the reason, don't get me wrong. I get so upset with well minded or good intentional counselors, you know. In, in, in the West and other places. Have to improve your life. Five steps, six steps. And, and you know what? I want you to know for me, any improvement is not a concept. It's a person. Let me tell you, for me, deliverance is not an idea. It's a person. Victory is not an idea. It's a person. Come on, salvation is not an idea. It's a person. Wisdom is not an idea. It's a person. Favor is not an idea. It's a person. Can I see somebody who believes every blessing in my life? It's not an idea. It's a person. It's called Yeshua. Yeshua. So when, when he took that child, he said, I wait. I have seen your salvation. What was he saying in Hebrew? I have seen Yeshua. And Yeshua said, Because ah. the child was laughing. Take
take the other instance. When Jesus came to the house of Zacchaeus, he said, salvation today has come to this house. What was he saying in Hebrew? Yeshua today has come to the house. And Yeshua was walking into the house. Church, when Jesus came into your life, it was salvation walk. Oh, come on. This is a place where I want somebody to join me. If you know, it was not an idea. It was when he came to my life, I have received everything that I need. Eternal life, salvation. Only people who know Jesus is your greatest gift. Can you make a sound of praise in the house? That's, come on, you can do it. Hallelujah, get it. God bless you. Jesus is your greatest gift when he came it was. We cannot separate salvation from him. Can you imagine if Zacchaeus, if we were in Zacchaeus' shoes, salvation has come. Or we will say, Pastor, do you have a preaching on that today? How many steps salvation can come? What are the Greek words for that? But in, in Zacchaeus' case, salvation is coming. Walking. That's God. You know, I've got a desire today. Can I say it? I'll, I'll try to keep my excitement under a limit. But can you join me today? In the days to come, I pray across Edmonton and Canada, in many churches that believe in the word of God, the person of Jesus will be so real. <laughs> Because when Jesus comes, there will be deliverance. When Jesus comes, there will be healing. And when Jesus comes, there will be mighty miracles. Can I hear the sound of people who believe in this country? What we need is not an idea. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. I say we need Jesus. If you believe that, can you welcome Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Come on, hallelujah, what we need. Is... Ha! Oh, I need. Let me promise you something. When Jesus comes, I'm willing to even stop preaching. <laughs> when Jesus comes, our worship team can take a break. Because when he comes, he comes as a king of kings, as the leader. The board will not dictate him. The pastor will not control him. The worship team will not say how for him to move. He will reign in our midst. So let's put our hands together as a prophetic sign that we will see Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Yeshua, come into our lives, into our family. If you believe that, can you say yes in the house of the Lord? Jesus comes. So I'm going to give you two minutes of a kind of a project. I'm going to show, throw two or three passages. And I want you to put the name that we know, Jesus, into that. If you want to put Yeshua, you can. But that's the Hebrew word. So I want you to look at that, okay? And then can you make that real? All you need is Jesus. You have it. You have everything that you need. Let me put those passages to you. And this is not me trying to kind of uh, make it work. It is, there's no need for any gymnastics. It is real. The word is Yeshua. So let's look at that. Few verses. And if you believe through Jesus, you can have all this. I want you to give, after you do this exercise, a mighty outburst of praise. Because today, miracles will happen. Amen. Let's look at that. Okay. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see. See, Yeshua, Jesus.
Jesus of Yahweh. In which he will show you today, when Yeshua comes, the Egyptians who we have seen today, you will see them no more forever. You see Jesus, it's victory. You see Jesus, the enemy that is coming after you, you will see that enemy no more. Oh, you got it. Let's try another one. Exodus 15, 2. I want you to shout the name instead of salvation, the word. The Lord is my strength and my song and it's become... Ah, oh, now you got it. This is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. Oh, can we try one more? Aha, uh -huh. you got the drill now. Let's go. First Samuel 2, 1. Hannah prayed and said, My heart excels in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in Jesus. Church is getting it. I rejoice in Jesus. Church, when you rejoice in Jesus, your enemy is completely destroyed. Your horn is lifted up. Victory has come to your life. Come on, church. No, no. Uh, I, I don't want you to give a half-baked praise enough. <laughs> I'll give you one more. And you can give a full-baked praise. Okay? Full with every fiber of your being. This one passage we all know. Okay? Second Chronicles 2017. Second Chronicles 2017. Hallelujah. The victory of Jehoshaphat. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position and see Jesus. Can I get somebody, when you see Jesus, you see victory. You see deliverance. You see healing. You see miracle. If you believe that, now it's a time for you to give the best praise to Oh, come on, church. See Jesus. The answer is Jesus. For your miracle, Jesus. For your healing, Jesus. For your deliverance, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. For every demonic powers to be destroyed, it is Jesus. Hey, oh, I feel like preaching. You got it. And the Bible gives us theologically so clear in Isaiah 12, 2. Isaiah 12, 2. Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my Jesus, Yeshua. He's your Yeshua. Who's your God? Yeshua. He's my, I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He has become my church. This is not religious word. It's a person. And can you declare Jesus has, he has become my Yeshua, the God who is salvation. He has become my salvation, my Yeshua. If you believe Jesus Christ is your savior, your God, your deliverer, your healer, your kinsman and redeemer. Can you give this God a praise from your heart? Yeshua! Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Now, this is a church that's apostolic, meaning it's not a denomination. We believe the God of the Bible is still on the throne. He's still working. 
we don't hush the word supernatural because we believe in the supernatural. We have heard the supernatural. We tend to see the supernatural, including some mighty supernatural in this church. The Holy Spirit is very active even today. So can I hear the voice of people who believe Yeshua is still on the throne? He is still moving. So for those of you who want to receive the next five minutes, so we've talked about salvation. Now listen to the next five minutes. This Yeshua will do something for you if you have him, if you got his name. And if you truly believe it, I don't want people to get excited because somebody else is getting excited. Don't do that. You know, if you want time to get excited, take this word, put it in your pocket, go home. And by Thursday, you can get excited. <laughs> but if you really believe that this word is real, even for today. I want you to give a praise because by this, we are going to bake, break the back of the enemy that's holding our people captive. Yeshua, that's his name. And there will be victory through his name. He will command like an army commander. Yeshua. And I believe very soon in the land of Canada, the God of Sabbath will command will command Yeshua healing salvation deliverance if you believe come on to now can I say that once again can I hear some young people all the people who want to join this particular you know sentiment of truth of faith do you want to join this not just some in remote part of Africa or India in Canada God Jehovah Sabbath is going to command one word Yeshua when he commands Yeshua chains are going to fall miracles are going to happen cancer will have to leave in the name of Jesus he's going to command Yeshua pastor this is our faith this is our faith can I get somebody to believe my God is going to command like an army officer he's going to command Yeshua when he commands Yeshua, families will be set free. When he commands Yeshua, chains will fall. When he commands Yeshua, people who are lost will be found. When he commands Yeshua, the dead will come back to life. When he commands Yeshua, miracles will happen. If there's anybody that believes, Sava Yeshua, meaning God is going to command Yeshua over Canada. Can you join me right now as an army that believes? Come on, army. An army of God. An army of God. He's not going to command any other name. He's going to command Yeshua. That's all what he's going to command. Yeshua. Sava Yeshua. Alex, you have been praying for this. For a move of God in this country, all it takes for God is to say, He's going to command Yeshua. He will look at a family and say, Yeshua. He will look at the lost and say, Yeshua. He will look at your children that have gone away from God and say, Yeshua. He will look at your situation and say, Yeshua. And when he says, Yeshua, victory has been commanded. Deliverance has been commanded. So can I see the synchronized voice of a church that is rising up from the, the heap of disappointment and ashes to declare and to sound the solemn sound of victory this afternoon, to say all it takes for God to set people free is a command from heaven, Yeshua, and people will be set free. And if you believe that's the answer to all your problem, can you make a sound that's going to be joined by the armies of heaven? Come on, hallelujah, Yeshua. Oh, hallelujah. So let me see if you believe these verses. If Yeshua's name is mentioned, these things are going to... Anybody wants to become the sound of Yeshua to your neighbors, to your family, to the people around you? And all it takes is the word Yeshua. 
And what is this word? Let me give you the first one. Philippians 2.20, I believe. Philippians 2.20. Can we, if you really believe that, I want you to make a noise. Philippians 2.18. 218. There is no other name given in heaven. Can you read that? Philippians 2. Can you find that verse? Hmm? No other name. What is that thing? 2.11. 211, please. To ten. No, no, nine. <laughs> Come on. God has highly exalted him Amen. and bestowed him the name Ishwa. That is above. I want somebody who really believes Jesus' name is above everything. Come on, church. <laughs> Let this chorus rise as a wave that suddenly got, you know, unlocked in your heart and now rising as a glorious tidal waves of praise unto the Father in heaven. God has given him a name called Yeshua, that name that is above every other name. Somebody said, if cancer is a name, the name of Jesus above that. If tumor is a name, the name of Jesus is above that. If depression is a name, the name of Jesus is above that. If addiction is a name, Jesus' name is above that. Can somebody who believes his name is above every other name, can you give him some praise for above? <laughs> and the next line, at the name, at his name, of Yeshua, every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. Yeshua. But let me push your faith even further. Do you believe when I read this, Mark 16 and verse 17? Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall accompany those who believe in the name of Yeshua. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. If they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Can, can I hear the name of Yeshua? The name given to the church. The name that's going to be the name on your tongue. Can we give this name? Yeshua praise. And today I'm declaring Yeshua has come into the house. Yeshua has come into the house. I have seen Yeshua. Hallelujah. I'm sending you out with a certain sense of certitude. And an understanding that only can be captured within the realms of the supernatural. In the days to come, when you come across situations, you may have no other tool. Inadequacy might be the word that completely captures you at that moment. You will feel that your words are not enough. You will feel all your experience is not good enough. You will feel even your seniority as a Christian is now failing you. Your understanding of words or words from the Bible, you're not able to use it at that moment. Maybe the grief is overwhelming. Maybe the situation is dismantled you. But then, remember this. Remember only this. When everything fails, there is something that you can still and that is found in the book of Acts chapter 3 verse number 6 
you can put everything that is humanly available into that and say, I have, don't have it. But Peter said, I have no silver. Yeah. I have no gold. I don't have words to help you. I don't have experience to help you. I don't have the tools to help you. But something I still have. This is a moment where I keep quiet and you preach. Come on. Something I still have. Something I know will work. Something that I know has power. Come on. Hallelujah. As you are declaring miracles happening in the name of Jesus. Pastor, I don't have anything else to give. But I know something that still works. It works for the Africans. It works for the Ethiopians. It works for the Filipinos. It works for Indians like me. It works for the Arabs. It works for South Americans. It works for the Russians. It works for the Ukrainians. There's something that works. It's called the name of Yeshua. Come on, church. If you believe there is power in the name of Yeshua, can you make a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? That's the name. That's the name. Oh, oh come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can feel the power of God. I feel I'm standing before an audience of 10,000s and I'm speaking this. May it be projected in the spiritual realm into the reality in the days to come. But I declare it anyways in this crowd and the crowd that will be listening in the days to come when everything fails, when everything comes to a point of inadequacy. There is something that will still be as vibrant as a pretend as before. And it's called the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen mighty, mighty leaders of other faith be touched by the name of Jesus. I have seen some of the most powerful miracles happen in the name of Jesus. I have seen creative organs created at the mention of Jesus. Let me tell you, his name contains power. When God said to Moses, you shall see the salvation, he tells the church to Today, you shall see Jesus. How many of you believe in the days to come, we shall see Jesus in our family? Come on. We shall see Jesus in our workplace. We shall see Jesus in our buses. We shall see Jesus in the metro. When a man gets saved, it's Jesus. We shall see Jesus. In the corridors of our parliament, we shall see Jesus. In the powerhouse of our senate, we shall see Jesus. In the education departments of Canada, we shall see Jesus as, you know, black clad judges will come down from the place of authority and kneel down and say there's a judge above all judges. His name is Yeshua. We will see Jesus in the media. We will see Jesus in the prison houses of Canada. We will see Jesus in the hospitals of Canada. If you believe that, can you make a sound giving glory and praise. Come on. On the count of three, give the best praise to Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! Yeshua. I don't know if anybody carries ram's horn or any trumpet. If anybody carries, you have it? Bring it, brother. If you don't blow it today, when are you going to blow it? <laughs> this is the moment for it. We will see Yeshua, the King of glory. So let me ask, Ronald, your need is a business. You're going to start a business. My answer to you is Yeshua. Amen. Amen. 
Mar uh, Mar Mar oh, come on, help me with names here. And, uh, uh, what's that? Megan. 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 Why don't you keep, I'll give you a new name, Blessy. <laughs> what is your need? Uh, what is your need? I got your name. Tell me a need. What is your need? Any need that you have. His is business, yours is any need. Don't, don't give her one word. Healing. I have got an answer. Yeshua. Anybody has any need? Today, you know, I've got the answer for all your needs. What is your need, brother? Wife. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Air wife, right? Uh, it's Yeshua. Come on. Hallelujah. For everything, it is Yeshua. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody has got any other need? Any other need? Don't say what he said. Come on, yes. My nephew Brandon needs new kidneys. New kidneys. Yeah. Can we say Yeshua? Yeshua. Yeah. Jesus. 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 You will see the salvation. You will see Yeshua. Anybody else? Can I give two or three? more people to say this. Come on, hallelujah. What's that? If somebody has said it, it's a package. <laughs> Give me something new. Come on, hallelujah. Salvation. And I've got the answer. Yeshua. Anybody else has got something else to say? Grace. Huh? Grace. Oh, brother. Oh, it seems tough enough. No, 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 no. Out of his abundance, out of Yeshua, we have received grace upon grace. It's not just grace, overflowing grace. Come on, anybody else? Anybody else? Huh? Quit smoking. I've got the answer. Yeshua! Oh, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Anybody else? Anybody else? There's one word that somebody missed out. Yes, brother. You want heaven? Oh, let me consult. Buddha doesn't have the answer. Muhammad doesn't have the answer. Hindu gods doesn't have the answer. The only one who has the answer. His name is Yeshua. Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Deliverance. Let me tell you today, there's only one person who can give you that. You can say that name out. Yeshua. Jesus. Hey. Uh, go ahead, brother. One more, one more chance. Let me see if anybody gets. No, 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 brother. One, no, give, give, give one more person a chance. Because they, they don't want to accuse you of blowing the trumpet before they, they, they gave the answer. One more person. Yes. What? Drive? Drug addiction. Drug addiction. Can I say something? You know, honestly, Pastor, it's okay. You know, Philippines has got a problem with that. It's not just individual. The country has a problem with that. I met with the governor and you're telling pray only for that. You know, so, but let me tell you this afternoon. The answer for Philippines, for any drug addict, is one word. His name is Yeshua. Let me tell you the word that I was looking for is that word called shalom, meaning peace. You want peace? He's the prince of peace. His name is Yeshua. If you want peace in your life, give him praise in the house of the Lord. He is Yeshua. Brother, you can blow the rams on because it's a new season. Yay. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we try that once again? You've got breath in your lungs, yeah. Ah, oh, it has to be a little more louder. Yeah, that's okay. It's coming, it's coming. Yes, it's getting there. Yes. Hey, come on, hallelujah. Together in one accord for the name that is above every other name. 
the name called Yeshua. Do you want to give the best praise right now for Yeshua? Yeshua. Now I want to make a confession today. Today was one day I really truly decided or desired in my heart or thought that I will have a very quiet 20, 25 minutes of preaching. And I can escape by saying this is not a preaching Sunday, it is a baptism Sunday. But I lost it. <laughs> Anytime you see your pastor get off that blazer, he's on fire. <laughs> he's on fire. Come on, church, hallelujah. So let me tell you, the answer for Canada is Yeshua. He's Jesus. Come in as the, the people will come forward for the baptism. Can we give the author of our salvation, the one who saved us, Yeshua, all the praise due to his name. Give him praise. He's the one who saved them. Save.